Hey there, Dirtbike people. I'm Chuck from TrueTech, and today I'm going to be changing the left side crank bearing, doing an update to the 2020 300RR engine that I've been working on. So many of you will be familiar with the 300RR crank bearing failures. It's been a problem since about 2016, 2017. I have repaired many of them with no updates and zero issues. However, the new 300RR engines are coming with a roller style left side main bearing like this instead of the standard 6206 ball bearing. This has also been a problem with the TM engines. They have exactly the same bearings and exactly the same problems. I have also repaired some of those. My theory is that the problem is side load during installation. I can't prove that, but all of the engines that I have rebuilt up to this point with the standard 6206 bearings have lasted at least an appropriate amount of time. In fact, I am not aware of any failures at all of any of the bottom ends that I have rebuilt on any betas or TMs. That being said, I do think that this is an upgrade because in the future, it will be easier to rebuild this bottom end properly if I use a roller bearing instead of a ball bearing, and I'll explain why. In most two-stroke engines, it's important that the crank bearings do not spin on the crankshaft. If they spin, then the tiny space between the crankshaft right here and the inner race of the bearing that is around it, that space is gonna get really, really hot, and it gets hot to the point where the inner race of the bearing welds itself to the crankshaft and ruins both pieces. Therefore, it's very important that that doesn't happen, so there are two ways that we deal with that. Number one is clamping the inner race of the bearing between the crank and usually a collar and a nut. The other way is to interference fit the bearing onto the crank, and that is the way that most two-stroke engines have it. Simply put, that just means that the bearing is slightly smaller than the shaft that it goes onto. So we heat the bearing or we press it onto the shaft or we pull the crank into the bearing. Any one of those ways works. The problem that we encounter with interference fit crank bearings, especially when they are both interference fit, left and right, is that it's easy to leave side load between the two crank bearings. That happens when we are installing the case, we put the bolts in and we tighten them up and the inner race stays with the crank and the outer race stays with the cases, so it side loads the bearings. Now, there are ways of alleviating that. I have lots of videos of that. I have a detailed explanation of that in my YZ250 video right up here. However, if we use a roller bearing instead of a ball bearing, that problem is completely eliminated. That's because this inner race is going to go onto this crankshaft like that. You can see that it's interference fit. And then that crank bearing is going to go into the case. And how far this inner race goes into that bearing is not critical. If it's back and forth the half millimeter, it doesn't matter. There is no way to side load one of those bearings unless the crank is physically too wide. Now, fortunately, the dimensions of a 6206 six bearing are identical to an NJ206 ECP. So I'm just gonna show you how to take your 6206 bearing and replace it with an NJ206, whether you have a beta or a TM. I have already replaced that 6206 bearing in the right side. And what we're gonna be doing is installing the NJ in the left side. Now, technically this is the correct tool to do this job. What happens is we heat this up and then we drop this into there, the heat transfers from the aluminum into this inner race, it expands this, and then this drops onto the crank and cools down and grabs it. I'm well aware that most of you watching this will not have this fancy KTM tool, so I'm gonna use this block of aluminum instead. And you don't need aluminum, you can use an old socket or a piece of steel. Basically what we're gonna do is just heat this up to slightly over 200 degrees Fahrenheit, and then we're going to set this on top of it, and that's gonna transfer the heat in, and then we're gonna drop this onto the crank. So we're gonna move these aside for a minute. If you know anything about aluminum, you know that it moves heat very quickly. So what I'm going to do is minimize the contact surface between the aluminum and my bench top just with that little spacer. Now I'm sure that this thing is too hot by now. I can see it. Oh yeah, we're like 500. So I wanted to get it a little too hot because aluminum can be hot on one side and cold on the other side. I want to let that normalize until it's all very even. You can see it's cooler on this side and hotter where the flame was, of course. So I'm just going to let that rest for a minute. While I'm letting this rest, I'm checking the run out on the crank and it's about 3,000, which is more than I would like to see. And I'm going to fix it 
just with a wedge here. If you wanna see more details about how to true a crank, I have an entire video on how to rebuild a crank. I don't wanna see any number really over 300. If it's hotter than 300, chances are I could damage the inner race. And if this inner race turns blue, you'll be doing a bottom end again in short order. So that's all trued up much better. We're within one thou now instead of three. That's pretty good right there. We're about 250. Now I'm just gonna set this on there and we'll let the heat transfer. Monitor the temp. It's getting hot real quick. Oh yeah, we're, we're there. We are ready. Might wanna use a leather glove. And just drop that on there, just like that. Now, if it doesn't go completely as you want it the first time, you can just tap down on it a little bit. In this case, this one went really well. If you do it methodically and carefully, that's what's gonna happen. Now, see, here is a great example of what you don't wanna see on that inner race. See how it's gotten blue? The surface hardening on this piece of metal is ruined. Now you can see this, because I kept it below 300, we're in good shape. There's no bluing whatsoever. And now I'm going to heat the case to about 150, 200-ish. I know we're about good there. I've been monitoring. You guys just don't need to sit here and watch me for five minutes. That should do it. Now, this particular bearing has a lip right here. We don't need that lip. I'm gonna put that lip down. Oh, we're a little on the tight side and I don't know where my hammer is, rookie. I guess that's actually a good example. I should have had my hammer. If I would have had my hammer quicker, I would have been able to knock it down easier in only a couple of taps. No harm done. In fact, it's good for me to show you that because realistically that may happen to you. Of course, you saw that I was going around it. What you don't want to do is hammer it in one side so that it goes cockeyed like that. You're gonna ruin the case if that happens. Take your time, go around, and when you hear that ting ting sound, you know that you're seated all the way. Now, like I mentioned, unless this crank width is too much, which it won't be because this bearing is the same width as that bearing, there is physically no way to side load these bearings. Now what's happening is the position of the crank is set by the right hand side bearing. So that's really all there is to it. If you wanna see me assemble this, I'll do that in the next video in this playlist. It's very straightforward, much simpler than the original one. If you wanna see how I do an original one, that other video that I posted a link to, I'll put a link in the description. It's the YZ bottom end assembly video. I go through it in great detail. If you like what I'm doing, you know how to see more of it. You can find me on Instagram as well. I sometimes post on TikTok and Facebook as well. Between running my business, repairing motorcycles, and maintaining my responsibilities to my wife and three kids, I am actively limiting my social interactions. And so the way that I believe I can do that most effectively is through my True Tech community. There's a six part tire change course on there. I'm working on a suspension course right now. After that, it will be an electrical course. There's also a growing group of enthusiasts enthusiastic and invested individuals. The community has been solving problems for a while now. It's getting pretty cool. If you're interested in that, I'll include a link in the description below as well. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks a lot for watching.